Hello friends, how are you? Thanks a lot for watching this video. My name is Robert, and today I want to talk to you about a very interesting and current topic. The harmonics. Society is in a continuous process of change, adapting and integrating new technologies. In industry, production processes are made faster, more flexible, more efficient and at a lower cost. Although rail transport was electrified years ago, road transport is accelerating the shift towards electric vehicles. Similarly, communication and data companies are integrating new technologies that expand data capacities, coverage and transmission speed, opening up new business opportunities. All this implies a higher energy consumption, especially electric energy. Today, electricity moves the world. But all these changes that we see in our environment are leading to changes in the electric voltages and currents, which power all the equipment that make these changes possible. Although alternating electricity is what drives motors, sensor electronics, control and communication systems, computers and many other equipment are powered by direct voltage, even more and more motors are powered by PWM signals, through variable speed drives. So it is necessary to convert the alternating voltage to direct voltage using rectifiers and switching power supplies. All of these elements are nonlinear loads. In other words, loads that give rise to currents with waveform that are not sinusoidal. Additionally, the development of the electric vehicle will pose a great challenge for the electrical distribution systems, since the electric vehicle needs to rectify the alternating voltage in DC, in order to charge the batteries it incorporates. Replacing all energy consumption in the form of fuel with electricity implies big changes for the electrical distribution system. All these changes will make the problems associated with the famous harmonics become even more important. In this video we are going to see precisely what harmonics are, how they are generated and how they are analyzed and quantified. But before continuing, I would like to ask you not to forget to drop a like if you find this video interesting, in that way, I will program new videos on this topic. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Harmonics are a tool to interpret the fact that voltage and current waveforms are distorted, moving away from their ideal sinusoidal shape, which gives rise to serious problems in electrical installations, problems that electrical and maintenance technicians must face, not only for the consumer companies but also for the electricity companies themselves. And to be successful in this mission, it is essential to know what harmonics are, how they are generated and how to measure them. The loads that are connected to the electrical network can be divided into linear loads, and non-linear loads. Linear loads such as coils in motors, resistors and capacitors, when powered with a sinusoidal voltage waveform, give rise to sinusoidal currents, although there may be phase shifts between voltage and current giving rise to reactive powers. On the other hand we have non-linear loads, such as computer systems, UPSs, rectifiers, variable speed drives, etc., which give rise to currents with waveforms that are no longer sinusoidal, and can be highly distorted. This distortion in current is generated by power semiconductors, such as diodes, triacs, thyristors, transistors, etc., when trying to regulate and control the power feeding these electronic loads. To analyze and quantify the problem associated with current and voltage distortion, we must make use of mathematics, especially a procedure called FFT, that is, Fast Fourier Transformation. This procedure that receives its name in honor of the French mathematician and physicist Jean-Baptiste Fourier, 1768-1830, indicates that any waveform that repeats itself in time can be constructed as the sum of sinusoidal waveforms, whose frequencies are an integer multiple of the analyzed signal. The sinusoidal signal whose frequency coincides with the analyzed signal is called the fundamental component, and the rest of the sinusoidal signals with frequencies that are an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency are called harmonics. Here we can see how a square waveform can be constructed by adding sinusoidal waveforms. In the image, the wave we are building is represented in black, and the fundamental component and the harmonics that we are adding to the sum are represented in different colors. As we add more harmonics, the wave we are building will be more and more similar to a square wave. In the case of electrical networks, the fundamental component will have a frequency of 50 or 60 Hz, depending on the country. For simplicity, throughout the rest of the video we will consider a 50 Hz network. In this case, 
the fundamental component will be 50 Hz, then the second order harmonic will have 100 Hz, the third order harmonic will have 150 Hz, and so on. In this other example, we can see in blue color the wave resulting from adding the fundamental component, with a frequency of 50 Hz in red, with a harmonic of order 3, with a frequency of 150 Hz in green, and finally the harmonic of order 7, with a frequency of 350 Hz in pink. As we can see, the resulting wave does not have a sinusoidal shape. Power quality analyzers such as the Fluke 435, integrate the fast Fourier transformation into their measurement functions, to carry out precisely the opposite process, decompose the voltage, current or power signal in real time, in order to obtain the effective values of both the fundamental component as well as the harmonics. These effective values can be represented in a typical bar graph where a number called order is shown on the horizontal axis, which for the fundamental component is number 1, for the harmonic of 100 Hz is number 2, for the harmonic of 150 Hz is number 3, and so on. And the vertical axis represents the effective value of the fundamental component and the harmonics, either in absolute value, for example in volts or amperes, or as a percentage value where the fundamental component would take the value of 100%, and the harmonics a percentage value in relation to the fundamental component. This type of graph, where the magnitude of each harmonic is represented for a signal, is called a frequency spectrum graph, and is used not only to analyze the harmonics of the electrical network, but also in many other situations such as in the analysis of mechanical vibrations, radio signals, etc. Seeing this graph already gives us a good idea of whether a signal is badly deformed or not. For example, if only one bar appears associated with a frequency of 50 Hz, then we are dealing with a pure sine wave signal, but if we see that many additional bars appear with a height similar to that of the fundamental component, then we can be sure that the signal it will be very distorted. Considering that an instrument like the Fluke 435 can analyze up to the 50th harmonic, Perhaps for a preliminary study we need a less detailed view, therefore, to simplify the study we can use two parameters offered by analyzers such as the Fluke 435. On the one hand, we can use the THD parameter, which stands for total harmonic distortion. The formula used for its calculation can be seen in the image, and basically what it does is compare the impact of the first 40 harmonics in relation to the fundamental component. It is a percentage. A value equal to zero would imply that the wave is not distorted, and therefore it is pure sine wave. On the other hand, the larger the THD, the more distorted the wave will be. But as voltages and currents have different waveforms, we can talk about the THD of the voltage and the THD of the current. To differentiate them, subscripts are used as we see in the image. For voltage, standard N50160, establishes that electricity companies should guarantee a THD of less than 8%, measured at the common coupling point, denominated PCC. Normally, the value that is measured is less than this value of 8%. If we measure the THD, in another point of the installation different from that of the common coupling point, its value may change, since the further we are from the common coupling point, the greater the distortion due to the voltage drops in the distribution cables caused by the current harmonics generated by the loads. For the current, the value provided by the THD can be very different depending on the type of loads that we consider. Here we can see the voltage and current THD associated with a variable speed drive with a 6 pulse input rectifier stage, provided by this harmonic calculation software. We would be talking about values around 2% for voltage and around 93% for current. For a variable speed drive with a 12 pulse input rectifier stage, the THD values would be around 0.4% for voltage and 8% for current, according to this harmonic calculation software. As we can see, going from a rectifier input stage from 6 to 12 pulses, implies a substantial improvement in the current THD value, and as a consequence of the voltage THD. Each manufacturer of power equipment, such as rectifiers, variable speed drives, UPS, or any other power system that involves rectifying alternating current and direct current, usually offers a complete set of solutions to reduce the THD of the current, such as increasing the number of pulses of the rectifier stages, adding passive filters or active filters, etc. If you need to install one of this equipment, I advise you to add these elements to your order, so that you can filter and reduce harmonics. 
saving money during the purchase of these products will surely generate problems and much higher costs in the future. Let yourself be advised by the manufacturers of these equipment who are really experts. I am telling you this from my own experience, because for many years I was responsible for sizing uninterruptible power supply systems, that is, UPSs, in a company that manufactures them, and I saw the problems associated when saving a little money on these elements. Although THD is a good tool to control voltage distortion, current THD does not always give us a clear vision of the impact that harmonics have on the installation. For example, let's consider a current low consumption light bulb that we can find in a supermarket. As we can see in the image, the current THD can be higher than 100%. A 100% current distortion is actually a very high value, however, in this case the impact that the current harmonics generated by the bulb may have on the installation will be minimal, since the current consumed by a single bulb is small, compared to the capacity of the installation cables. Now, if we consider thousands of light bulbs lit at the same time, the situation can be very different. Therefore, to better reflect the impact that current harmonics have on the installation, we can use another parameter called TDD, that is, total demand distortion whose formula is similar to that of THD, but if we look at the denominator, we will see that now the parameter IL appears, which is the maximum current demanded. In this way we are comparing the impact of current harmonics in relation to the maximum current of the installation, which will give us a better vision of the load level that harmonics represent. The standard N5160 is applicable only to the quality of the voltage, so it does not establish limits regarding harmonic contamination in current. In this case we can use the IEEE 519 standard, which does establish a limit to the TDD value, depending on the value we obtain for our installation of dividing the maximum short circuit current by the maximum current demand, as we can see in the picture. As was the case for the voltage THD, these values are specified for the common coupling point, or PCC. After having seen all this, it no longer seems so complicated to carry out a harmonic analysis, we just have to make the measurements and compare them with these limits. But to further simplify the technician's work, and avoid having to remember the limits of each voltage harmonic and the voltage THD, analyzers such as the Fluke 435, 1738 and 1748 have the N5160 standard memorized, thus allowing a simple automatic verification of the measurements obtained according to this standard. This can be done through the monitor function that these analyzers incorporate, allowing a graphical view of compliance with the standard and generating a report via software. Thanks to this function, we can not only determine if the THD value is acceptable, but also the value of each voltage harmonic, since these analyzers also have memorized the limit established by the N5160 standard, for each voltage harmonic. Undoubtedly, this is a great help to determine the origin of the problem and to find suitable solutions, such as designing a specific filter for the harmonic that exceeds the limit value of the standard. Regarding the limit of harmonic distortion in current, according to the IEEE 519 standard, power quality analyzers such as the Fluke 1738 and 1748 offer the possibility of installing an optional firmware license in the equipment, so that an automatic report can be obtained according to this standard, through the software included with the equipment. Taking into account all that has been seen, we can now get down to work and make a complete analysis of the harmonics of both voltage and current. Now we are going to see an example of the possibilities offered by a power quality analyzer for the analysis of harmonics. For this demonstration I will use a Fluke 435. As we can see, as soon as we enter the harmonics menu, the typical bar graph appears, where on the horizontal axis we have the order of the harmonic, and on the vertical axis the magnitude of it. This equipment can analyze up to the 50th harmonic. With the F1 button we can select between voltage, current or power harmonics. With F2 we can select if we want to visualize the three phases, or each phase individually, each one with a different color. With the F3 meter option we can go to the numerical data display mode, and since there are many parameters we can use the F1 key together with the up and down arrows to scroll through all the numerical values. On the right we will see a bar that moves vertically to indicate which portion of data we are viewing. On the left is the parameter name that is displayed for each of the three phases, L1, L2, L3, and Neutral. Now in F3 the trend option appears, which allows you to view the data in the form of trend graphs. 
At the top, the current values appear together with the parameter that is displayed, and again with the up and down arrows we can see all the parameters graphically. Pressing F3 again we return to the numerical mode, and with F2 to the representation mode of the frequency spectrum. Now we can act on the installation simulating an increase in current harmonic number 3. If we now go to the current waveform display mode, we will see that the waveforms are highly distorted. The voltage harmonics are not greatly affected. We can also use the cursor to move over each of the bars, starting on the left with the THD of each phase. At the top of the screen, the measured numerical value associated with the parameter at that moment will appear. With the right and left arrows we can move the cursor. Likewise, to facilitate viewing, with F2 we can select a specific phase. In the case of moving the cursor to the fundamental component or any harmonic, in the upper part the value will appear in absolute magnitude, for example in amps or volts, also as a percentage value with respect to the fundamental component, the associated frequency and the associated phase shift. We can see that when we select the individual display mode of each phase, the harmonics appear on the screen up to the 50th order, as mentioned before. We can see how the analyzer shows the changes in the harmonics level of the network in real time. We can see again at the graphical level that during all this time, the analyzer has been recording all the data of each of the parameters that we have in this menu. As we can see, an analyzer like the Fluke 435 allows us to carry out a simple analysis based for example on the THD. But it also allows us a deep analysis with temporary records of voltages, currents, frequency, K-factor and of course each of the voltage harmonics, current and even power harmonics, an aspect that few analyzers are capable of performing. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. In this way we have seen what the famous harmonics are, what loads generate them and how we can measure and analyze them to determine, with the help of international standards such as N50-160 and IEEE 519, the danger to which an electric installation may be subjected due to voltage and current harmonics. I hope this video has been of interest to you. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, don't forget to drop a like, so that I can know that you liked it, and I can program new videos on this topic. In a next video we will see, on the one hand, the problems that voltage and current harmonics can cause in electric installations, and on the other hand some possible solutions for their reduction or containment, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you soon.